Okay. The job of our engineers is to replace the light bulb, pretty much, right? Okay, so uh, my son was asking me the other day if uh, I can build him a, a computer because he wants a gaming computer. And we went to check how much the uh, GPUs cost. And it's like freaking crazy because of crypto mining. So with that, I'm going to give it to uh, William McCarter to talk about cashing out, tracking compromises to crypto mining.
is one called Edelkuts. And this mining botnet uh, will get a user system and install CPU miner and then run it in the background process and communicate with the command and control server um, to get instructions and pull down the, the actual miner. And this was a big deal. Um, kind of caused a lot of issue out there, but this is something that you know, we track. So, um, so they literally took advantage of you know, getting onto unsuspected victims' computers uh, with this botnet. Um, Monero always being the choice of the threat actors. Uh, and that's really due to what they can buy with their cryptocurrencies, a lot of the illegal goods and services that they can buy. So uh, moving on, uh, next we're going to go over the few mining button, and it's called uh, Smondrio, <laughs> uh, which have different groups that actually were in charge of those, but uh, very similar methods, uh, just like the Alcaz was. Uh, utilizing the eternal blue exploits by uh, the NSA, the, um, the shadow brokers. Um, next was the Zila. It's a money campaign that's very sophisticated compared to the previous ones. Um, so it was utilizing multiple known exploits, um, including the eternal blue and eternal energy um, NSA leaks, uh, plus Apache threats and .NET new vulnerabilities. So there was a lot of uh, hoops to jump through for this particular botnet, which made it very interesting to us. And now that we've gone over some of the big moments of the, like the botnets um, that are going around, I'm going to switch gears to the, more of the browser type. So CryptoJack, which is a no the security community and basically it's the media. Um, so CodeConnive, they, they released the JavaScript snippet, like three lines of code that you can sign up with them and you could put on your website and it was like an alternative method to having ads. That was the purpose of it. I mean, like, you know, instead of having those like, ads and trackers on your page, um, you could have, you know, agree and let your computer do a little mining for a little bit while you cruised on the internet. But unfortunately, overnight, the bad guys found out that, you know, they could use this and set up shop and do mass injections and compromise all the websites in, in the typical fashion that we all know. So what happened next is um, after the crypto jacking of newborn, the biggest thing that just happened on the way, you know, traveling to here from Arizona was there was a Drupal Geddon 2 uh, found by some fellow researchers uh, that I know, and it's a mass uh, exploitation of Drupal content management system, which is open source. And so that's affecting a lot of people, like about 4,000 to 6,000 sites at least uh, from the latest checks on it. And I mean, that, that's what's so funny about this is we picked the topic, you know, a while ago and then nothing really quite happened and then poof, something happened in one year. So I, I was like, yay, it's a good topic. <laughs> so now that we're up, we're up to speed on some of the observed threats um, and methods of the crypto reacting. Um, Let's go over actually some of the threat types and the delivery methods. So the first one's going to be compromised websites, which uh, you keep you know talking about, and this has always been a problem in one way or another. Um, there's been a vulnerability going around with not just Drupal, like I just spoke about, but content management systems and in general, people like to you know set up a website and then forget about it for five years, right? It's not updated. So a lot of these are like WordPress, Joomla, Magento, um, and those are some of the favorites and experience use. Uh, they also like to use cool vulnerabilities in plugins, so like WordPress plugins or any kind of plugins um, that people can get like third party uh, that actual companies that release open source don't have control of. So the traffic method with this is straightforward. It's an injection method, uh, compromise websites with you know one of the Methods I just described, or like an FTP, you know, or something. Um, a, good, a good example for the bad guys, like um, what kind of the targets they're going for, would be like CNN, um, high traffic websites, getting a lot of visitors on there, you hide some code. Uh, that that's the ideal target for for the bad guys. But they, you know, they're not shy. They'll take advantage and just put it everywhere. So the next type is ad scams. And so everything has ads now, no matter where we go, right? Everything is just ads in your face, YouTube ads in the middle of videos, stuff like that. 
Uh, you're going to take some of the guys in the bathroom, you know, see cats. It's, it's, it's kind of crazy, right? Um, so what they do is they usually put just a little um, JavaScript code like in the ads or let's just use Gmail tag, but typically it's a JavaScript um, just redirect. And it's also known as advertising. Um, and uh, I'm not sure if everyone's familiar with that, but that's just you know, the ads on the page. You go to it and you get redirected to you know, something you don't want to. Um, so they, yeah, they they like to they like to deliver with this method because it goes in the background process. Um, okay. uh, so they like like to do a lot of redirection and start things in the background process. So you have no idea what's going on. Um, once you start hearing your computer fan go on, you know you probably need to mess it up. <laughs> um, so another method is exploit kits and. This is interesting because if you pay attention to what's in the fake news on some security stuff, uh, actually kits are actually still being used heavily. Uh, this is something that I specialize in. So, uh, what they did was they took it and they privatized it, and a lot of it is not hitting the United States, it's hitting other countries that have more money. Uh, private buyers, uh, you know, they're not sharing with anyone that's being exclusive, which costs a lot of money to, 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 you know, to do that. Uh, and the delivery method is they have to get a hold of like a someone's own traffic, you know, they have to have the exploit code created like a landing page which reads your computer and then it delivers something. So they have options in this at this point. They can do just the injection, the injection that I've been showing you. Um, and then the background process starts with the redirection. Or they can pull down binary, uh, just like the typical exploits, you know, get days when get where you lead into whatever kind of numbers at that, at that day, like in posting. Um, another interesting thing about exploit kits is that, uh, and I try to deliver a bit with it, um, is there's a lot of intermediary um, traffic filtering and stuff going on, which is like why certain parts of like the country, like if we're researching it, we can't see it in the United States, but if we're you know, coming from like a a proxy in China or something like that, we can see it. So there's, they have a lot of options with this, so that's why it's still a method used today. Um, not only that, it's, you know, they, they're putting fake ads on a plate. Get rich crypto mining type of thing. So that people are clicking on this, we're getting rich, right? So uh, that just ends up redirecting to another coin mining script, the same, you know, the repeating thing that I'm showing you here with traffic. So next is email, and it's coming in your spam. It's coming in your spam on folder too. So this is also going into your redirection. Um, very similar, you know, it's, you, you click on a link for whatever kind of spam that you get, and there's some redirection that happens with malicious redirectors that mining script executes in the back end, and you go on with your day where they make money off of your CPU. So, real quick, I'm going to go through an investigation now that everyone's kind of caught up with some of the methods. I mean, there's a ton of methods, anything you can think of, but uh, 25 minutes is, you know, not a lot of time to go over this. But, um, so, going over a, a quick investigation here, um, this would be something if you're sitting around and an alert goes off and you're like, oh, oh what do I do? Um, so, kind of go over the steps here. It's just a, what I call a quick investigation method. So you're going to get an alert of some sort, or a blog, or you know something in OSINT that you're calling it, open source intelligence. And at that point, you're going to start a virtual machine, um, start your analyst, you know, notes bundle, you know, start to take notes because they're very important. Uh, then you're going to grab the malicious content from there, um, and at that point, you can start documenting, you know, the indicators in your you know, analyst notes, and. Then you can move on and reverse the code, um, especially with coin miners. It's a lot of obfuscated code that happens. There's, you know, there's different methods. There's tons of them. You can go on GitHub and see a ton of, just a ton. Because once one person gets an idea and they share it, someone's going to take it, fork it, you know, make a branch, continue on making it. Uh, and then at that point, you do rules. So you can think like Serracata or Yara or some sort of rules, bro, um, for monitoring this. And then you want to add it to like tracking. You want to track these. 
you want to track these guys, right? Um, if you don't, you're just going to continue to, you know, play whack-a-mole all day and hitting one IP when you do a little bit of damage. So here's a common, like, minor injection. Um, oof. <laughs> so it's a little, little bit of nastiness, right? Um, I think, if you guys can see, I'm colorblind, but I did put a rectangle. I think it's, it's orange to me, but it's red in the top left. Um, so that is kind of an indicator I've seen from the past exploit kit days. Uh, it just tells me, you know, here's some JavaScript that's obfuscated. Here's a certain encoder, uh, you know, or obfuscator that they used, which happens to be right off the bat, just because I've seen this a million times, and I have notes on it. It's from Java, JavaScript obfuscator.com. So, plain and simple, that's where it is. The sad part is, it's really hard to be able to re-obfuscate it from the same website. There, you know, you have to actually put a little work into it, but I'm going to show you a quick method as we go into investigation. So, here's the Quinn Minor Injection Part 2. Just wanted to show, you know, it's rather large and it's rather large, and you know, this is Hex. So this is what Hex looks like. Computers love this. This is not very human readable, though, right, like at all. Uh, so you can, you know, you have to see this particular section, and it'll give you a little bit of breadcrumbs that you can use to, you know, find out who the bad guy is. But it's not going to do the whole, the whole shebang at once. It's not going to do that. So uh, at the bottom of the one minor injection, um, we can see the hex stop here, and JavaScript functions appear, and there's a very recognizable uh, section. Please highlight it uh, on screen the eval. Um, so anytime I see that, I get really excited, because I'm not sure if a lot of people know, you can change that to console.log and do some debugging, and you're having a good time. Um, I wrote the steps out, so if people are not familiar with how to do this, you can do it really quickly without having to do any coding at all. All you need is a few things and you're on your way to uh, finding out who the, who the bad guy is. So here are these steps um, that I laid out. And so you're gonna open up, you know, Chrome. It's got a really good developer, you know, tools you can do in Firefox as well. Um, you're gonna take that whole JavaScript, all that stuff that I showed you, which is it's rather large, um, and you're going to take that and you're going to put it in, um, you know, switch the email uh, to the console.log, paste it into uh, the developer console in Chrome, and uh, paste them, or well, paste the modified JavaScript into Chrome, and then you run it. Um, you're going to take that output, and you can put it in a file, and to make it more human readable, because it's all, it's, it's a mess, you can run JSP to file, which is, the only way that our eyes can see all this madness. Um, and this is what it looks like at the end here. So we just took like a new <coughs> script, and now we're finding the address of the thread actor that did the injection. Um, right there at the bottom, so you can, you know, depending on where, you know, who got injected, where your company, this is like key information to have if you're gonna get like a law enforcement involved or so, something like that, right? Um, or you can report it to them. But, you know, Monero, that's what this is, an address for it. You're not gonna get any information back from them now. All they're gonna do is shut it down. And unfortunately, at the point when they just shut it down, the miner still goes. And now Monero is still making money. So my personal preferred method is to let's let's get some someone involved that can actually do something um, and see what happened to you know the, the website that compromised work today. So Coming from this, go into some tracking and trending. And this is a very important thing. Um, I love tracking and trending and love notes. And from here, you can utilize uh, OSINT. So in the beginning of that first slide in the coin miner script, there, there's the bar underscore section that was highlighted. Uh, you can use a tool. Um, you can use this tool right here. And you get more information. You can see just that little string of code right there. We have 500 and some websites that, to this day, uh, have this minor script up there. It used to be on about 4,000. Uh, so this is kind of like one of the older campaigns that I ran through, you know, until this recent one. But um, I'm already did the, the work on this one. So you can use this tool, uh, get this information, start 
you know, you can sign up for an account and you can pull in, um, you can pull in like all these indicators and put them into whatever correct tracking uh, platform that you use. And that's what's leading me into this next part, which is a lot of stuff. So on the left, you can see um, this is MISP, by the way, and these are tags. And um, on the left is a lot of the campaigns. Can't fit all of it on the screen. Uh, there's a lot more, but that's all the coin miners scripts and stuff that's happening uh, today. Like as we're speaking, this is old stuff, all the way tracking, the same indicators. Um, it's, it's just a really good tool to have if, if no one knows what MISP is. It's, a, it's like a threat indicator sharing platform. Um, and you can sync up with your buddies that you really trust and start sharing and making tags and information on this. So, um, as you can see, sorry I could make it bigger on the left, it's hard to fit all that in there, but there's a ton of different threat actors, different miners being used. Um, all these are going through, uh, you know, for my narrow, just that one cryptocurrency. So, um, oh, and you can also have TLP on here, so if you have something, um, so if you have something that you want to, um, you know, keep in household, you can do that. Um, and you can have stuff that can be TLP white, uh, which is transfer like protocol. Sorry, if no one knows what that is. Um, the U.S. government uses it. It's kind of a sharing method. And so with that, um, that's a real quick inf investigation. That's um, pretty much all that I have uh, up there, real quick. I probably talk way too fast. Uh, sorry about being nervous, and I hope you guys understood me. Um, but if there is any questions, uh, we can talk now or after. I'll be around. Um, also, we're just an active part of Dish Cut, uh, as well. So if you guys are there, um, we're willing to talk about all this stuff, especially during the traffic.